Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Today we're going to be talking about custom elements. So if you are using Wix and you can't find that right element out of the standard Wix toolbox for what you need, you always have the option to develop your own custom element which can be dragged into the editor exactly like any of the other Wix elements and you can create your own designs and your own functionality. So we're going to be talking about the very basics of how to set something like that up how to establish two-way communication between your custom element and your Wix website or your Velo code like you can see here, and the advantages of using custom elements over iframes such as this multi-select dropdown which can allow you to have a dropdown which overlaps other elements within your Wix website. So if you want to learn how to do all that and more, let's get started. So to get started, I have a completely empty Wix Studio website, uh, and everything that I'm going to be showing you today can be done equally on the classic Wix editor. Uh, the places that you find certain things might look a little different, but the principles are the same and the capabilities are the same. So let's start off by talking about how we add a custom element to our website. And then I'm going to digress a little bit and talk about why we would use a custom element versus some of the other options that we have in Wix. So to add a custom element, you're going to go over here to Elements, OK, Add Elements, and you're going to be looking for Embed and Social, what you see right over here. And once you go to Embed and Social, you'll see you have several options here, one of which is a custom element. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on that, and it will add a custom element widget to our site. Uh, and you'll notice here that as soon as I add in this widget, I have a prompt here that's telling me that I need to upgrade to a premium plan in order to use custom elements. So that's one thing that's important for you to know, that in order to use this feature in Wix, theoretically, you need to upgrade to a premium plan. There is one caveat to this that inside of Wix blocks, you also have the option to create custom elements, and you can do that without having a premium plan. So a workaround around this limitation would be to create your custom element within a Wix block, and then install that Wix block on your free website, and that would allow you to use that custom element even in a stage before you upgrade it to your premium plan. Uh, the reason which I'm initially not going to show you that way is because it does require a few extra steps and a little bit of knowledge of how to use Wix blocks, which is not a requirement for using custom elements. So first I'm going to show you how you would use a custom element assuming that you have a premium plan for your Wix website, or at least you plan on having a premium plan. And later on, we'll talk a little bit about how you could also do this in blocks. I just don't want to confuse you with throwing a lot of a bunch of things at you at once that are not 100% necessary for understanding custom elements. So in order to continue with the demonstration, I've temporarily upgraded my site to premium, which by the way, you can do too and always get a refund back within 14 days. Double check that before you do it because I can't vouch for Wix, but generally their policy is that you can get a full refund if you cancel your premium plan within 14 days, which is what I plan on doing. Um, but I've upgraded it for you guys so that I can essentially show you how to do a custom element as if I had a premium site. Um, so here now you can see that the prompt has gone away, so there's no warning here about needing a premium plan because I have one. Uh, and we can continue explaining how to set up a custom element. So in order to set up a custom element, we're going to need to choose a source, which is essentially going to be a JavaScript file for this custom element. And in order to do that, we can just click uh, right over here where it says choose source. And you'll see that we are given an option of choosing either a server URL or a Velo file. So a server URL would be the case where you're hosting this JavaScript file with this custom element on your own independent server and you just want to point to it. Usually what I would do is use the Velo file option, which essentially allows you to host the code for the custom element 
inside of your Wix website. And once you select a uh, Velo file, if you haven't done so yet, you'll be prompted, uh, as you can see here, to turn on dev mode. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. That would be here in studio. And if you're in the classic editor, it would be somewhere kind of up here on top. And you could just click to go into dev mode. And this will essentially give you access to all of the code files uh, that you can edit yourself uh, within your Wix website. And essentially, uh, when we're doing a custom element, we're going to be adding some uh, code here to the public part of our um, Wix uh, code inside of the, uh, the editor here. And the way I usually like to do it is directly from the custom element. So if I click now on the custom element again, and I click choose source, and I choose Velo file, you'll see here now that I have the option to choose a Velo file. And if I go in here to select, since there are no Velo files which can serve uh, as a file for the custom element, I can create a new file just like that. And that will create a file here with some uh, boilerplate code. Uh, you can actually just go ahead and get rid of that because we're going to be building our own custom element from scratch. Uh, and if you want to find this file here within the file system, then you can just go right over here to code. And you'll see here that within public, we created Wix essentially auto created this uh, new folder called custom elements. And we have this uh, Wix default custom element file right over here. Uh, typically, I would also change this file name just to be something, you know, a little more appropriate to the custom element that I'm building. Uh, but since we haven't really talked about what we're going to be building yet, I'm not going to change that name uh, just yet. There is one more step that you're going to need to do after you write the code for your custom element. Uh, and that is to declare the tag name. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about what that is. So you can see over here tag name. Um, so that's just one last thing that you're going to need to do to ensure the visibility of this custom element and the usability of this custom element uh, inside of your website. So now that we have a basic understanding of how to get started with the setup of a custom element, we haven't really built any kind of custom element yet. Uh, let's talk a little bit about why we would choose to use this custom element versus some of the other options that we have uh, within Wix. So a custom element is something that we'll use whenever one of the default or standard Wix elements doesn't really serve the purpose of what we're trying to build. And this will usually be the case when we're trying to build something either with a more complex design than Wix allows with its standard elements, or something that has some kind of unique functionality that we can't really achieve with just the Wix standard elements and Velo. So those are the scenarios that will usually build a custom element. And in those scenarios, there are still other avenues that we can take in order to implement some kind of custom design or functionality, such as using an iframe. So adding an iframe is also done from the same place that we added the custom element. So that would be here from add elements, and then again, back to embed and social. And here you see we have an option to either embed code or embed site. Both of those are essentially the same widget, uh, and they are an iframe. So let's say I go here, and I click embed code, then you'll see here that we have an iframe that's been added to our page. And just like with our custom element, we also have the option to add in some custom code uh, here. So if I go over here and click add enter code, essentially, I can add HTML code here that will be displayed within the iframe. So let's say for example, I go ahead and I add in just let's say, a div that says, uh, hello world. Okay, and I can go ahead and click update. And then here you can see that HTML uh, being displayed inside of the iframe uh, versus a custom element which uses JavaScript and it needs to be built 
as a custom element, which is a class which extends HTML element, which we'll talk about all in a moment. Um, so to implement something like as simple as this hello world might be a little more complex inside of the custom element, but the custom element does provide some advantages. And I want to highlight what those advantages are and what scenarios uh, I would therefore use the custom, custom element for, and also what are some of the downsides of using custom element and the complexities of using custom elements. So let's say I go ahead and I publish my site with the iframe and the custom element. And then I head over here to the live site and I'm just going to go ahead and hit refresh. And you can see now that our iframe is displaying hello world. And I'm going to go ahead and inspect uh, and take a look at the actual HTML elements that are here in each scenario. So if I go ahead and I inspect this uh, hello world iframe, uh, then we can go in and we can essentially see that it's nested inside of an iframe. So we have an iframe and essentially this is being hosted somewhere else that's not even um, our Wix website technically. Um, you can see like the source is this um, long URL over here and inside we have like our own document and our own uh, our own body and the div over here uh, which says hello world. So there's somewhat to keep it in simple terms, there's somewhat of a disconnect between our website and what's being hosted in the iframe. Uh, and we're sometimes somewhat limited in terms of the access that we have, let's say from within the iframe to the rest of our website. Okay. Um, furthermore, uh, we're also limited to the design or the height and the width of the iframe. And I'm going to show you another demonstration that will highlight that as well. Whereas the custom element, okay, which I, again, there's nothing in the custom element yet, but you can see here, uh, this is essentially that tag, okay, of the custom element, uh, which is its own unique HTML element, but it's built into the natural flow of the HTML of our website. So it's just like any other HTML element that is on the page uh, and the access that it gives and the design integration that it provides is much more streamlined and much more native to our website than what an iframe provides. Uh, and this might all sound like very abstract um, and I think it'll be clarified as we do more demonstrations of how the custom element works, but I will show you one more thing that could hopefully highlight the difference between um, how an iframe works versus how a custom element works. So later down the line, uh, I hope to implement with you a custom element, which will be a multi-select dropdown. So if we take a look uh, over here at this code pen, uh, you can see that this is a multi-select dropdown. And this is just a very simple uh, multi-select dropdown built with uh, Bootstrap. Okay, so we have a bunch of the kind of the bootstrap uh, CSS files and JavaScript files here all supporting this functionality. Uh, and I could technically just grab all of this and put it within an iframe. Okay, so let me go over here to uh, back to our editor. And I'm going to go here into the iframe. And I'm just going to dump this all uh, right over here and click update. And then uh, what we can see over here is that uh, we have essentially that element here inside of the iframe. But let's say I make my iframe a little smaller because I want to put another element under my iframe. Okay, so I want to make this like a little smaller like that. And I want to have another element, let's say a box. Uh, let me see if I can find a box here. Let's say quick add container. Uh, and let me change this container to, whoops, not add media. <laughs> let me change this container to have, let's say, a darker, uh, a brighter background. And I put that here uh, right under this drop down. So the behavior that we would expect here, um, if this drop down was built natively into our website, 
is that when we click to select something, the drop down would appear above the box that's under it, above the container that's over it, right? That's kind of the natural flow that you'd expect on any website. Um, but if I go ahead and I click publish, and then I head over here to the live site. So let's say I try to open up this drop down. You'll notice here that the drop down is kind of confined to the boundaries of the iframe. So the iframe doesn't change size dynamically and it doesn't accommodate like the overlapping of this drop down above the other elements of our website. And this is something that we will be able to overcome with a custom element. So that's just one of the advantages. There are other things such as being able to listen to standard uh, JavaScript events, DOM events, uh, using a custom element like scrolling and stuff like that, which would be harder with an iframe. The one advantage that I think an iframe does have has to do with communication with the rest of your website. So let's say you want to establish some kind of communication between your Velo code and your business logic and whatever you've built inside of your custom code, then that is a lot easier to do with an iframe than a custom element. And I'll remind you about that when we actually hop in and build a custom element. Um, but that's just one thing to note. And that's one thing that informs my decision making when I'm considering if I should be utilizing an iframe or a custom element. So I hope that that helped you uh, making your decision if this is the right tutorial for you and what you need is a custom element or if you need an iframe, which I have other tutorials about. Um, but if you're sure now that you want to move forward with the custom element, we will go ahead and build a basic custom element to begin with and then talk about some more advanced use cases later on. Okay, so now that you understand also the basics of how to add the custom element to your website and also you've enforced your uh, conviction of the fact that you should be using a custom element, uh, let's talk about how we can actually write out the code for building our custom element. So the way a custom element works is it's essentially a class uh, which extends the standard HTML class. Uh, and the general structure of the code is going to look something like this, like what you have here. So you'll have here a declaration of the class and you will give the class a certain name and it will extend HTML element. Inside we'll have something called constructor and we'll have also a connected callback, which is a callback function that runs whenever uh, the HTML element is initiated on inside of your uh, website. And last but not least, we will have the definition uh, or the registering of the custom element. And this over here is that tag uh, that we talked about before that we also have to add into the custom uh, element settings. Okay, so that's that tag over here. And for those of you who are familiar with JavaScript and with classes, I mean, this a lot of this is stuff that you would be familiar with from general use of classes in general, such as constructor. Um, and I'm not going to be explaining, I'm not going to be doing a full uh, lesson on what JavaScript classes are and how they work and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to be taking some things here for granted, especially the things that don't really change very much uh, from custom element to custom element. And we'll try and highlight the areas in which you can really customize your custom element and build in the parts that are unique to you. Um, so we're going to take this as kind of a starter template. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this code. And I'm going to go back to Wix Studio. And I'm going to go back into our file over here. So Wix default custom element. And I'll open that up. And I'll paste here the boilerplate code right over here. Uh, the only thing I'm going to get rid of is this console log right over here because we don't really need it. And I'm going to go ahead and continue uh, defining things as if we're using this my custom element naming as the name for this custom element. So first of all, I'll go ahead and I'll change the name of the file over here. So I'm going to go over here and just click rename and I'll call this uh, my custom element .js. Okay, rename the file. And this, since this is now the tag, okay, this is the new tag for our new HTML element, I'm going to grab that. 
and I'm going to look now for the uh, the custom element over here. I'm going to choose source. And you'll see here now that our source got disconnected because I renamed the file. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to grab this file here from the drop down. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this tag name to be instead my custom element. Uh, one thing just from experience is that often the tag name uh, takes a few times until it actually changes. So like I put the tag name in here and I close this window. If I go to choose source again, sometimes uh, it doesn't actually show the new custom tag name. Uh, so I would, sorry, just the new tag name. So I would go ahead and double check that. Another indicator would be that if you see your custom element actually being displayed here, that means that it's connected. Uh, and if you don't see it, then it's not connected. At the moment, there's nothing to see in our custom element, so it's hard to judge by that. But you'll see as soon as we start building out the custom element that you'll start to see things uh, happening in here. So uh, now that we've set up the very basics of our custom element over here, uh, we're ready to start actually building out the design or the HTML of our custom element. And the way we're going to be doing that is uh, using something called a shadow DOM. Uh, and I want to point you here just to the MDN documentation. Uh, so you'll note, first of all, that this custom element thing that we're doing is not something that's unique to Wix. Okay, this is a general concept inside of web development if you want to build your own custom HTML element. Okay, and you can take a look at general uh, documentation as well as the Wix documentation. And anything that you see here in this documentation is applicable to the custom element that you're building in Wix as well. Uh, and these tend to be a little more thorough than the Wix documentation. Uh, like Wix documentation will explain how to do things in Wix, whereas this will just really go, you know, all out in terms of explaining all the possibilities of a custom element. So something that we're going to be utilizing uh, that appears in this documentation that we don't see so much inside of the Wix tutorials that explain about building a custom element is the utilization of this uh, shadow DOM. Okay, and essentially what the shadow DOM does is it constructs an additional DOM. So like kind of an additional unique web page within our custom element in the sense that certain things that we do inside of our custom element won't accidentally affect things outside of the custom element. For example, like mixing different styles and stuff like that. Um, it's not necessarily always necessary um, to use a uh, shadow DOM, but it can help prevent certain situations that you don't want to occur. And I don't really see any disadvantage to using it. Um, if you know of one, let me know in the comments below. Um, but I'm going to show you this implementation because this is the one that I usually uh, end up using. So in order to uh, construct the shadow DOM, I'm just going to copy this line right over here. And I'm going to head into our custom element. And all the code that we're writing now is going to go inside of our connected callback. So this is all the code that's going to run as soon as our element is initialized here on uh, inside of the web page. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste that right over there. And now that we've created this shadow DOM, essentially what we can do is we can create our own HTML elements and append them to this shadow DOM. So for example, I can go ahead and I can create um, my own uh, div like we did, let's say, with the iframe. So I'll call this, uh, let's say, wrapper. And I'll say that it will be a document dot uh, create element. And this is going to be a div. Ooh, div. Yeah, spelling is hard. Uh, and then what I can do is I can say, for example, wrapper dot inner HTML equals to hello world. Okay, and then the last thing that I'll want to do is I'll want to append this wrapper to my shadow DOM. So I'll do shadow dot append and I'll append the wrapper. And then this wrapper should now appear within my custom element. 
So let's go ahead and check and see if this is working. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take a look at the web page and I'm going to, uh, sorry, at the editor. And I'm going to go ahead and go into preview mode. And now you can see here that it says hello world inside of the custom element. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this might not work on my live site. Uh, just because when I went here to go choose source, I did see this warning here. So to see uh, this element live, you have to connect a domain. So like not only be premium, but connect a domain. I don't, I didn't remember that being a restriction. So let me just double check uh, the live site now. I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh here a few times. Uh, yeah, so I do see it. <laughs> um, so I think that this is a, um, yeah, this warning is uh, not so accurate. Um, you don't, I mean, based on what I'm seeing here now, you do not have to connect a custom domain in order to see the custom element. Um, cause I'm, I'm still using like the Wix, the standard free domain here, even though my, my site is premium. Um, so now we see this hello world. Okay. So as of now, we haven't really done anything too crazy, um, beyond what we've done in the iframe. Um, so let's talk a little bit next about how we can go ahead and add some styles to this custom element. So here within the uh, MDN documentation, again, uh, we see a demo of how to add styling to a shadow DOM. This actually does basically match what we see in the Wix tutorials as well. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating an element, uh, a style element. We're going to be declaring the text content of this style just using regular CSS um, syntax inside of a string. And then uh, we're just going to attach the style to uh, the shadow, just like we did with the wrapper. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, replicate that uh, inside of our custom element. So over here, uh, what I'll do is before I do anything with any of the elements, it shouldn't really matter if you do it before or after, but just for the sake of organization, I'll say here const, uh, const style equals to uh, document dot create element. And we're going to be creating the style element. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to actually declare those styles. So what write out the CSS. Uh, and again, I might if I was developing this now, um, you know, for a project, I might decide to like do some of this stuff in CodePen and then copy it over because as you can see here, the Wix IDE is not so uh, friendly when it comes to like linting for this kind of code. It's more built for like Velo code. Um, so it it's hard to like visualize and, and also notice bugs in advance when you're writing it directly inside of the Wix editor. Um, but now for this demonstration, I'm just kind of, I'm being a bit lazy um, and taking, you know, the short way, which is the long way. So uh, we declared the style, and now that we've done that, we're going to want to set the uh, text content of that style. So text content equals two, and here we're using a template literal. So these are back ticks. Okay, I know that it's really hard to see when you're watching the tutorial. It's not a single quotation mark. It's not a double quotation mark. It's a back tick. Uh, if you're not sure what back tick is, you can Google it. Um, and that's what we're using here. And that essentially allows us to put the string on multiple lines, the text on multiple lines. Um, so in order to um, create styling for our wrapper, um, either I can use like a query selector to select all the divs, or I can also assign uh, a certain class or a certain ID to uh, this wrapper. So let me go ahead and assign an ID to this wrapper. So I'm going to go ahead and say here, uh, wrapper dot set attribute, e uh, set attribute. And then here, I think I can just go ID and say that it will be, let's say wrapper. 
And this stuff I often refer to the documentation to look up because, you know, when we're doing regular coding in Wix, um, you know, this is not exactly our bread and butter. So, you know, if you're a regular dev and you're doing this kind of dust stuff all day, um, then you might be used to it. But even now with like most of the modern JavaScript frameworks, you're rarely writing this kind of JavaScript. So you often have to look it up when you're actually, you know, getting back to the bare bones JavaScript. Um, so this should give it an idea of wrapper. And then here within our styles, essentially what I can do is I can select, um, let's say the ID wrapper and give it some styles. So let's say what I could do is um, background and let's say I can give it a background of red. Okay, something, something very, very obvious that will help us at least check to make sure that everything is working. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to append the styles here to the shadow. I uh, just don't want to forget that. So shadow.append, and here we're going to append the style. Okay, so theoretically, this should give a red background to that div that we created, which has the hello world in it. Um, so let me go ahead and check that out in preview mode. Theoretically, publishing should work as well. Okay, so I don't see anything here in preview mode, which means that we probably have a bug. Um, so what I'll do is I will publish uh, and head over to the live site in hopes that uh, through the console, uh, which should log errors within our custom element as well, uh, we will be able to figure out what the issue is. So I'm going to go here to inspect and to console. Uh, and it says here that set attribute is not a function. I think that is because I misspelled attribute. <laughs> um, so that should be two T's and one R if I'm not mistaken. And I often am mistaken when it comes to spelling. Uh, so let's go over here and here. Okay, so set attribute. This should be T R like that. And let's just try publishing this again because Every time I go into preview mode, uh, my computer crashes. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to publish that and let's try refreshing the live site. And OK, so I'm getting the hello world here, uh, but I am not getting I am not getting the styles. I'm not getting the styles. Let me just double check here and see. This seems to be the same. Yeah, I'm using append instead of append child, but I don't think that's what's causing the issue. Let's see, text content. I think I did the same thing in mine. Let's see. Uh, text content. Yeah, that looks right. Style that text content. Maybe I hope maybe it's this gap here. I don't think it's that gap. I don't think that that should make a difference. Background. Maybe it's an issue with setting background for Oh, that might be the issue. So in CSS, <laughs> this is also the problem with like writing this out as a string. Uh, is that there's zero linting. Like even if I would do this in a regular ID, there would be zero linting on this. So like often it's it's better to take like a multi-step approach to building these custom elements. Like first build it out just using like regular HTML, CSS, JavaScript without a custom element and then take each part of that and construct it into a custom element. Um, otherwise it becomes very hard to debug. Like this is totally a real life scenario. I think that that might be it. Uh, let me let me try that. Um, wow, that that could have easily taken me like ages to figure out. No, so it doesn't seem to be that. That doesn't seem to be the issue. Um, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and give it a height and a width. Let's try doing that. So for the wrapper, I'm going to give it height, let's say 100 pixels, and width 100 pixels. And let's try publishing that. 
And if that doesn't work, I want to make sure that it actually gave it the ID. Let me just double check here. Let's inspect this element. Okay, so you can see here, I mean, this is good learning. This is good learning material anyways. Um, so you can see here, so for the style, oh, so here, I mean, it's interesting. You can see here that the height and the width hasn't been applied yet because you could just see your background red, but the ID is correct, right? So we did manage to give the ID of wrapper here. Uh, and this is correct in terms of selecting, um, selecting, selecting wrapper. Let me just give it another refresh. Let's see if, let's see if we have a height and a width there now. Yeah, so it does have height width, it does have background red. Okay, so let me, I'm, I'm not going to stop the video, because I want you to see every, like, I want you to go through this with me, because, I mean, this is exactly the same stuff you'll probably encounter. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, create a code pen. And here in this code pen, I'll go exactly in the staged approach that I said before that I, <laughs> that I was being lazy and I was skipping, but actually it's inevitable. Um, so, so essentially I'm going to build out just using HTML, CSS, what I'm trying to achieve in the custom element. And then once I'm confident that the styles work and everything works, I will uh, transfer that over to our, uh, our custom element. So what we had essentially is we had a div right and it just said hello world and let's close that div okay so that's what we had over here and we know that this div has uh, an id of wrapper uh, i don't need to set it here with javascript because i know that that part is working uh, and then here we have the css so let me select the css like this and we're selecting wrapper and let me try just setting let's say background uh, background red, just like this, and it's not working here either. Okay, so as to be honest, as I was writing that out, I think I identified what my problem is, uh, and the problem is that I don't think that red here needs to be inside of quotation marks. Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> problem solved, um, just by taking a look at it from another perspective. And if I go back here into studio and I go ahead and I just get rid here of these single quotation marks and I go ahead and hit publish, then hopefully we will see our custom element red in its full glory. Let me go ahead and refresh that again. Not giving up. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can see here now it's uh, the height and width is 100 by 100. Okay, and it is background red. Um, so this is, I'm so happy that this happened, to be honest. Um, and I hope you kind of didn't lose me uh, throughout these, uh, this kind of debugging. Uh, but really, it shows. Um, either ways that you can debug your custom element if you're, you're struggling, and also kind of a more structured approach to building the custom element. Um, like if you're building something, like this is only three lines of CSS and one line, one line of HTML basically. So you can imagine like a super complex custom element with hundreds of lines almost, um, why it would be important to first you know, do a proof of concept like this inside of a pen. And then once you know you got everything working, you got the CSS right, uh, then go ahead and implement it kind of within your custom element uh, file over here. So uh, just, uh, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm so happy that this happened. I hope you are too. Uh, but now that we have gotten this working, so we've managed to get an HTML element um, there and we've managed to style it, I want to talk a little bit about how we can essentially access the HTML, uh, the custom element from 
our Velo code. So how we can essentially do something that's called setting attributes and change our custom element using quote unquote messages that we send from within our Velo code. So making changes to our custom element from within uh, Velo code is a twofold process. First of all, we need to set up our custom element in a certain way so that it is able to accept the information that's coming from the Velo code. And the second part is that we actually need to write the Velo code that will send over that information. So let's start with the first part, which is setting up our um, setting up our custom element to be able to accept the information. And the way that we do this is by observing attributes. So we, you can see here in MDN, we have an example for this as well. Uh, and the way we do this is first we set up these observed attributes, which is an array of strings, which are attributes that we're observing. And the second thing is that we set up this attribute changed callback, which is essentially a function that will run whenever one of these attributes is changed. Okay, and basically what we can do is then write some custom logic, which will observe the attribute and do something whenever it's changed. Okay, so for example, what we'll try and do initially is we will observe a color attribute. And whenever that attribute is changed, we will go ahead and change the color of our custom element. Okay, we'll change the red color of the custom element uh, to whatever color is passed in as the new attribute. So let's go ahead and set that up. So first of all, we're going to declare static observed attributes equals color. So let's go back to Wix Studio. And this is done uh, all the way up top here uh, within even before the constructor. To be honest, I think you could do it anywhere within the custom element, but here they choose to do it on top. So I'm going to do it on top just to be safe as well. So even before the constructor right over here. So I'm going to do it here uh, before our constructor. OK, we're going to be doing uh, let me just zoom in static. Observed. Attributes equals two. And for some reason static. Let me just double check here. Yeah, this should be fine. Static observed attributes equals. And then we're going to do here uh, color. Let me see why this is throwing a linting error. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's throwing this why it's not highlighting the static for me all nice uh, like it should be over here. Um, but this does look correct to me. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, and then here on the bottom, we're going to be setting up the attributes change callback. I'm actually just going to copy this one from the documentation. Uh, and I'm going to head back here under our uh, connected callback. Okay, so right over here, I'm going to add in this attributes changed callback. And here we're going to want to make some changes to add the functionality that we want. So essentially what we want, uh, we can leave in this console log to tell us that a certain attribute has changed. But essentially what we're going to get here inside of this uh, callback is name, which is the name of the attribute. In this case, uh, it's color. And we're going to get the old value, so whatever it was previously. Um, so if it didn't start as anything specific, it'll just be null or undefined. And then we'll get the new value, which will be whatever we're going to pass in from Velo. Okay, so basically what I want to do is I want to take this new value and I want to uh, change the background color of wrapper. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first I'm going to add an if statement. If name uh, equals to color, because remember, we can have several attributes that we're observing, and it could be that a different attribute will change and not color. And I don't want to do something with the color every time any attribute is changed, only if the color attribute is changed. So if the name is color, then we'll do um, wrapper dot, um, and here, Okay, so here 
I can't just select wrapper like this because this wrapper is declared inside of our connected callback function. Wrapper is declared inside of the connected callback function, and it's not part of the um, the custom element. So I can't, let's say, use like this dot wrapper. Um, so what I could do is I could either declare, like, say, this dot wrapper equals, okay, if I know that I'm going to want to select it later on, I could also just reselect, I could reselect it over here. So for example, I can say, um, const, const wrapper equals to document dot, uh, get element by ID wrapper. And then what I could do is I can say wrapper dot style dot, um, let's say background equals to new value. Okay, just like that. So it'll, if, if the attribute that's been changed is color, then the uh, wrapper uh, style background will be assigned the value of new back of new value. Okay, uh, so that looks like it should work. So the next thing that we're going to do is hop in and write the velo side of the code that will uh, make this change happen within the element. Okay, so in order to communicate from the velo side, we're going to be using this set attribute uh, property uh, or method of the custom element. Uh, and it's pretty simple. Um, the documentation here looks a little complex and long, but it's actually quite not the case. Um, essentially, uh, what we can do is just select the custom element in Velo. Um, so here you can see that uh, I've selected the custom element, and I'll just change this to custom element, not custom element one, because I only have one custom element. Uh, and here within our uh, IDE, essentially all we need to do is sele select the custom element. So I'm going to go ahead and select it, custom element. And we're going to do set attribute. And we first we put the name of the attribute. So in our case, it's going to be color. And then we can set the new value of that um, attribute. And as you can see here, it could be a string, it could be a number, it could be Boolean. Uh, for us, I'm just going to do a string. So I'm just going to do blue, something really obvious. Um, but to really highlight what this is doing, I think it would be better if we set this attribute, let's say, at the click of a button, uh, just so you can see it being red and then turning into blue. So let's go ahead and add in a button uh, to our uh, canvas here. And I will drag it over here. And I'll just leave, this will be our, uh, you know, trigger. Um, trigger change button. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm being very unoriginal with names today. So trigger change button. And what I'll do is I will set up a an event listener. So trigger trigger change button dot on click. And inside the callback function, what we'll do is we'll set the attribute to blue. So essentially, our custom element should start out as red. And then when the button is clicked, it should change to blue if everything is working. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to publish the site. And I'm going to head here, uh, sorry, back to our live site. And I'm just going to refresh the page probably a few times until I see that button there, basically. Yeah. OK, there we go. So we have our button now and we have our custom element. And I'm going to open up the console because we should also see that message uh, about the um, attribute changing inside the console. So let me go ahead and I'm going to click Start Now. And nothing happened. <laughs> so yeah, I'm guessing that um, let's go ahead and start debugging this. So my first intuition would be that I did do something wrong here with the, yeah, so this, this isn't even running the attribute change callback. So that 
makes me feel like there might be something wrong here with the observed attributes. Um, oh, observed. Okay, I do have a typo here. Observed attributes. Observed. <laughs> I should probably just copy this line from the docs because <laughs> let me copy this as is. Let me copy this. There we go. And I'm just going to get rid of size because we don't need size. And let me try publishing this and see if that was the issue. 90% of the time, it's a typo. 90% of the time. Always remember that. That should be, uh, should be your mantra. Uh, let's see. I hope I refreshed enough. Let's see. Okay. Uh, attribute color has changed. Okay. So you see that that did work. So now we are successfully observing that attribute, but it cannot read the properties of null reading style. Um, so that means that this was a bit of an issue here in terms of how I, um, how I got this element. Yeah. So I had a feeling that this was going to be an issue. Um, essentially what I did here is I did document docket element by ID, but document is referencing like the outer DOM or the light DOM, uh, where we need to be referencing the shadow DOM. Um, so instead of using document as a selector here, I think I need to use this dot, uh, shadow. This dot shadow instead. So this dot shadow dot get element by ID. And in order to reference this dot shadow, uh, we're going to have to declare the shadow DOM um, outside inside the constructor. So then we'll have to say here um, this dot shadow equals to um, this dot attach shadow like that. And then anytime we reference the shadow DOM, we're going to need to do the same thing. So anywhere we have here shadow, this is going to be this dot shadow and this dot shadow. Um, and I'm sorry if this is like a little unclear if you're not familiar with JavaScript classes. Um, but basically, like you can think of this as the custom element. And then we can kind of nest certain global variables, like not global, but local to the scope of the custom element within this, this scope, uh, and then access them throughout different areas of the element. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this, the, this keyword is one of the, uh, like syntax is one of the more complicated things I think to understand, uh, in JavaScript. Uh, but I think that these changes should help us, uh, get that done. So let me go ahead and try publishing this again. And I'm going to refresh over here. Okay, I'm not getting any errors, which is always nice. Let me try uh, start now. There we go. So it was changed to blue. Okay. Um, so that is an example of how you can uh, change something within the custom element using Velo code um, by changing an attribute. And you can have multiple attributes. One important thing that I want to highlight is that the attribute has to change in order to uh, invoke some kind of, in, in order for this attribute changed callback function to run. So if I was to click the button again multiple times, like you can see that here, like no matter how many times I click this start now button, this attribute color changed uh, console log is only coming up once. And that's because if I'm sending the value blue, 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 I'm not actually changing the value of the attribute so that callback function doesn't run. And this becomes especially relevant if you're trying to send a message to the custom element that's not necessarily meant to um, have a unique value every time, but just notify the custom element that something happened. Um, yeah, like just like like a click event happened or something like that. 
And the change that you want to make in the custom element is not necessarily linked directly to the new value. So sometimes what I would do there is just send in like, you know, new random numbers or something like that as the changed attribute, uh, just to make sure that the, the changed uh, attribute change callback function runs again. So that's just kind of like a little tip trick. Um, it's something that I've encountered several times when dealing with uh, custom elements. Uh, another thing that you might want to do with custom elements is the reverse of sending a message from Velo to the custom element. So essentially sending a message from the custom element to Velo. And that's the next thing we'll take a look at. So again, in order to implement this communication, there's going to be an implementation that we need to do within the custom element and something that we need to do within our Velo code. Um, so within the Velo code, we're going to be using this on event listener to listen for an event that's dispatched by the custom element. And inside the custom element, we are going to essentially use this dot dispatch event in order to create a custom event uh, that we can listen to from our Velo code. Um, so let's uh, set that up over here um, like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first copy the part that's going to go into our custom element. And I'm just going to use the boilerplate code here because it's written. And this tutorial has been taking a long time already. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy that. And as you can see, it needs to go into the connected callback. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look for our connected callback. And what I'll do is here, uh, let's say after we've appended all of our um, HTML elements, I'll add this in. Obviously, we don't need connected callback again. We just need what's inside. And I'll format that. So essentially what's going to happen here is that we've added a click event listener to our custom element. So anytime I click anywhere on the custom element, uh, we'll have a click, uh, we'll have essentially this custom event dispatched. And the name of this event is my event. And these, this is the data essentially detail my event data. This is what we're sending over uh, as the data from our custom element to our Velo code. So inside of our Velo code, uh, I'm going to need to set up the on event listener for this specific event, my event. So let's go back into our Velo code. And here, what I'll do is I will select our custom element. And I will use the on. And here, so first of all, it's going to take the event name, which is my event. Okay, that's something that you can decide for yourself within the custom element. And the next thing that we're going to need is a callback function. And this callback function is going to have an event uh, parameter that we can log. So console.log um, event from custom element. And within that event, we're going to have the data that we sent over, among other things, we're going to have the data that we sent over from our custom element. So let's go ahead and publish. And let's see if we can uh, figure that out in testing. Let's go ahead and refresh. Awesome. So let me try kicking, clicking. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to kick our custom element. I want to click it. Uh, so I clicked it and here you can see we got the uh, the console log here. So event from custom element. And here we can see um, a bunch of metadata about the event. And specifically, we have this detail, uh, this detail property, which is essentially the data that we sent from our custom element. So that way we can send over some kind of data and based on the data that's sent over or even just based on the event that was fired, we can do something within our Velo code. So that's how to create the second direction of communication. Um, so just to do a, a small recap, uh, what we've talked about so far, how to build a custom element, um, how to um, add in a shadow DOM and different HTML elements, how to style those HTML elements, and how to establish uh, two-way communication between our uh, custom element and our Velo code. 
Uh, so now what I'll do is I'll just do a very quick demonstration of how we can implement that multi-select dropdown uh, that I showed you earlier as a custom element, uh, just as kind of a final wrap up to this tutorial. And then you can let me know in the comments if you want to see any more custom element tutorials uh, later on, and we can talk about some more specific use cases. Okay, so just to wrap up, I, and when I say I, I mean AI, uh, built the previous uh, dropdown that we had seen inside the iframe and code pen into a custom element. So let me just take you and show you it over here. So this uh, select picker, this is the new custom element. And as you can see, it's much more complex than the simple custom element that we built. And to be honest, probably much more complex than a lot of custom elements that you built. There are certain things here like uh, importing different scripts and needing to use jQuery and stuff like that to make the bootstrap work um, that really make this a quite complex use case. And that's why I didn't even try to spend hours building this out myself, but just went to ChatGPT, which didn't manage, and then Gemini, which didn't manage, and Claude, which after a few iterations did manage uh, to give me this um, custom element. And what I did is I implemented it over here, uh, right over here, and I put it above this uh, black box just to show you um, how it would look, because really the whole point of this is just to demonstrate to you what this custom element can do that the iframe couldn't do. Um, so if we go here uh, to the live site, then you can see here that my selector is over here. And it's been acting like a little quirky, to be honest. Uh, I think it might be like a Wix thing uh, that would eventually work out. But basically, um, you'll see here if I start typing for the select, then the drop down appears above the black box. Okay, and this is really what we were going for. And this is what we couldn't achieve with the iframe. So even though my custom element, if we look here inside of the editor, you'll see the custom element, it extends a bit over the black box, but it doesn't really go the full length of that dropdown. Uh, and even if I was to make this um, custom element even smaller, like really like just up to, I mean, now it's not really letting me so much, but even if the custom element was really just around the element itself, it would still behave in this manner, okay, where it kind of naturally interacts with the rest of the web page. So that's one of the real advantages of a custom element. And I'm going to wrap up here because it's been quite a long tutorial. Uh, but do let me know in the comments if you want to see more stuff um, about custom elements. And if you have any specific implementations you would like to see, and we can experiment with those. Um, as always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to give a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this and not miss any of the future custom, uh, custom element videos, then don't forget to uh, subscribe uh, to the channel. And I'll see you next time.